Uh, I thought that the Hawks had a legitimate shot to win this uh, uh, championship, and um, Trey Young had 35 points entering the fourth quarter uh, yesterday and scored just three. That's it. Because he hurt his ankle. And if his, his ankle's hurt, he said it's sore, and that'll be that's all she wrote. In like the freakest way possible, too. You know, that's, back pedals into the referee on the sideline. So we call a rap. That's yeah. a wrap. If he um, cannot perform anywhere close to the proverbial 100%, he said he was sore, and who knows, he's a young guy, and maybe he'll rebound. If he doesn't, then that's it. Then the Bucks will eventually win two more and then move on. And Chris Middleton, once again, is uh, after uh, what he did in game one, where he shot 6 of 23, and it was an outlier, quite frankly, of his performances in these playoffs. What he is doing is turning himself into a bona fide end of game closer. That's what he is. And maybe it's born out of opportunity that he hears knocking because it's his time. And maybe it's uh, born out of opportunity because the Bucks can't give their MVP player the basketball with the last three minutes to go because he'll just get hacked and then dribble the ball 15 times before shooting it after 20. And it's something that doesn't benefit the Bucks to give the ball to Giannis in the last two minutes of the game. And Drew Holiday, uh, nice stat line with the assists. He had 6-4-12, and 12, two steals, two blocks, so he was all over the place. But it was Middleton going 15-26, 11 rebounds, three assists shy of a triple-double. Giannis 33-11. and 11. Trey Young getting hurt. The Hawks already being banged up. Bogdanovich being on half of a, a lower uh, body. And um, this thing is getting the sense that it is the Bucks' year in the Association Eastern Conference. Two more to go. Bucks 113, Hawks 102. One of the things that we'll be keeping an eye on over the next few days is Trey Young's ankle. And then in the other series, the Suns and the Clippers. Clippers trying to do what is very difficult. I, I hadn't seen it going into the game, and I was prepared to see it maybe coming out. How many... NBA playoff teams have begun an NBA playoffs digging out of an 0-2 hole three consecutive times to start their playoff campaign. That's what the Clippers needed to do. I don't know how many teams have ever been in an 0-2 hole three. I don't know, you know, very very rarely do teams make it three levels in a playoff campaign. Being down 0-2. Let alone being yeah. down 0-2 yeah. in all three and then coming out of an 0-2 hole in all three. So they're still down two games now after four as opposed to just two. And, you know, that was like Eastern Conference basketball since the last dance is on everyone's mind today. You know, that 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 had the feel of a of a Pistons Bulls or a Pistons Knicks or a Bulls Knicks or mid nineties game. You know, like Pat Riley's out there telling Anthony Mason to start hacking people and like that, you know, and Lambeer and Mahorn. It had a feeling of that, you know. The offenses were somewhat stagnant. Reggie Jackson's terrific, man. He is a fun player to watch, and and clearly he's the one who has stepped his game up considerably with Kawhi being out still in his luxury suite, mm -hmm. where I'm assuming he definitely gets first dibs at the third quarter, second half, <laughs> apple cart, dessert cart that goes around in Staples. We've said it over and over again. The dessert cart at Staples is, is uh, second, second to none. To none. Second, second to none. none. Yeah, yeah. So... um and Chris Paul uh, did a lot of dribbling. I'm not going to lie. He just does a, does a lot of dribbling, and the, the offense has just got really stagnant in the third and fourth quarter. Yeah. Um, but the Suns made the shots, and and uh, somehow, some way, the Clippers never led in that game. And then it got down towards the end where um, Cameron Payne is dribbling and Batum knocks the ball out of bounds. And it's ruled Suns basketball. And after further review, it sure looked like Batum hit the ball and it rolled off of Payne's fingertips and out of bounds. And, you know, with the Clippers needing a free throw from either Paul George to make one, he did miss one, very crucial, or a free throw that Terrence Mann should have gotten at the free throw line because there was an and one that wasn't called. Or what have you, that was a crucial possession right there. Mm -hmm. And I think after further review, 
the fact that the NBA did not buzz in, if that's the way it works, you know, and the Clippers, if I'm not mistaken, were out of challenges to use one in a very smart way to get Devin Booker felt out of the game. Where it was an and one called for Booker after further review. Actually, it's an offensive foul. He's out. So I think the reason why the league didn't stop, although I didn't read the pool report if it was asked of the officials, is because of the way game two ended. And it took a half an hour to play 90 seconds. And it took 11 minutes to play 0.9 seconds. And one of the reasons why it took a half an hour before the last 11 minutes spanned 0.9 actual playing seconds was because of the Pat Beverly out-of-bounds play. And I think the league decided if it looks like what it looks like, that was out of bounds on the Clippers for the first, what, 50 50 years of NBA basketball that now we're just not going to stop to parse everything out like it's the last second of the Zapruder film. They're not going to do that in the last 90 seconds. I think the way game two ended caused the NBA to just move on, play on. That's so ridiculous. I, and and if that's the case, that was my that's the way I'm sitting there reading it. I'm like, why not stop the game for this when you stopped it for that same exact play? Exact play. On Beverly on Booker in game two. It's the same thing. Why aren't you looking at well, Batum knocked it out of bounds and it rolled off of Payne's fingertips? Why are we not looking at that? And if you are Handling the end of the game through review and that process differently between games two and four of a playoffs, that's a problem. That's a problem. But the bigger Clipper problem is they just couldn't put the ball in a hole. I mean, you know, they couldn't they couldn't throw it in the ocean from three point line. You know, look I mean, look at that. Paul George, five of twenty, and Reggie Jackson, eight of twenty four. I mean, those are those are easy math numbers to do right there. Zubach is playing his head off. They don't have anybody else to to deal with DeAndre Ayton. Who is a beast. He's a beast. I mean, they got a big problem. And it looks like Suns and uh, and Bucks are coming our way. Looks like Suns and Bucks are coming our way. And it could be it's the closeout game for the Suns tonight. And um, that'll be something interesting to watch as well. Just so disappointing, man. Like, you know, as a Clippers fan, I've just since I've been on the show, I've talked about our bad luck and our history. And you finally get to a point where it looks like we actually might have the best team. And then you lose your best player, one of the best players on the planet Earth. And he's sitting in street clothes. And it's just, man, it was just, it's frustrating. It's well, frustrating to watch. That's been the theme of this whole playoffs, though. In a, in a weird way, unfortunate way with the, you know, the Lakers and the, the Nets. They were, looked like yeah, they were everyone. on a collision course kind of the whole year. And then... You know, bang bang! It's it is disappointing. Way it goes because you're a fan yeah. of that team, and you know other. You know, obviously, Bucks and Suns fans are ecstatic. Yeah, they're yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> too bad today. So, hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.